A long time ago, I used to uh, be very fond of my NES, and um, well, I still am today, I guess. But there are always certain times of my, you know, NES playing life, so to speak, in the early days of my youth, that I felt a bit cheated. For all those people who think everything that Nintendo does turns to gold, well, I have one thing for you. For those who are actually around 1993 and onwards, really, um, you might recognise this game. Anyone who actually was around when this game was out, when it first cost 30 quid, when it, you know, you may have been given to it as a present or someone by a relative, then you may just understand how I feel about this game. Now Nintendo have this thing about innovation and quality and stuff. Um, the original measure for this was the Nintendo seal of quality, as you're about to see on the screen. Um, basically, it's it was after the 1983 games crash that Basically, people wanted reinsurance that they're not just being sold the same old drivel. Well, this still worked for a little while, but then some questionable games started to come in. And then finally, there was one game that took the biscuit. And that game was... Okay, as you can probably tell, this game wasn't actually produced by Nintendo. Um, although it was given the licensing and the seal of quality, so they are just as much to blame for this atrocity as the creators of the game themselves, I suppose. Right, Mario is missing. It's not a game. A game actually implies that there's some sort of fun involved. Um, this, in fact, is a learning tool. It's an educational program. And this game rubs you up the wrong way in so many different levels, it's not even funny. The idea is you're supposed to find Mario, who has gone missing. For some reason, Coopers have decided, I know, we'll go all around the world and we'll nick stuff from, like, all different parts of the world's famous artifacts and stuff like that, and Luigi has to try and stop them. Problem is that this game is, in fact, does it, goes about it in all the wrong ways. For a start, the control system is crap. Basically, after you select the scroll bot past all the different options, then start to actually select that option. Also, the actual gameplay itself is incredibly tedious. There is literally no sense of danger in this game whatsoever. Hell, even Granny's Garden on the BBC Micro actually had more gameplay than this. Okay, it was an educational game just like this, but at least there was a sense of danger. At least there was a game over screen if you fucked up. No such scream on this, and I don't even think it's possible to die on this game. In fact, I think it's not actually possible to die on this game. That's how bad it is. Um, also, you can summon Yoshi into the proceedings, although he adds absolutely feckle to any of the proceedings on this game. He is absolutely useless. I've literally found no use for this reptile whatsoever, thus adding to the crapness of the game, really. Um, also, note that I'm picking up big bags of money by the looks of things. These are artifacts which the Coopers have stolen. Um, now watch as I touch this Cooper right here. Right, watch, watch, look, touch, touch pick up the coin. Right, okay. In most Mario games, when Coopers touch you, you die. On this, that doesn't happen. So, these Coopers who are taking over the world... Oh, these scary Coopers, they are taking over the world, yet they are completely harmless. 
What the hell is that all about? And notice I keep checking on my map. Let's actually find out where the information centers are, where the Coopers are. It gets really goddamn tedious. Um, in fact, this game is completely goddamn tedious in general. The questions that these guys ask you, that they expect to ask you, if you got this game when you were like 13 or something, you literally have no idea how to answer them. It's completely crap, it's really unfair. Like some of the questions are way too hard for like 13 year olds to answer and stuff. In fact I reckon some of the parents might even have trouble answering some of these questions. Overall, Mario Missing is just dire, the music's awful, the controls are... well, they're bad but they're... They're good for a NES game, so to speak, because they only have four buttons. You can't exactly do very much with that. The graphics are good. The gameplay is just freaking dire. I mean, it really is. It, as I said before, a gameplay assumes that this is actually a game and therefore is fun or has some sort of, like, you know, entertainment value in it. It doesn't. It's freaking dire. If you were expected to pay £30 for this in 1993, you would be pretty peed off. In fact, you would be pretty peed off if you got given this as a present by a cousin or an auntie or something, which I did. My, my cousin gave this to me and he ran off giggling. Right, that's how bad you thought this game was. Anyway, um... All in all, this game doesn't deserve to exist. I don't know why Nintendo licensed this game, but they did. It's absolute proof that the seal of quality is in fact crap. Um, also, furthermore, not everything that Nintendo touches turns to gold as proven by this game. So, what have you learned from this lesson? Don't trust anyone when it comes to buying a game. The only person you should listen to is yourself. You should experience the game yourself. You can take advice from other people, but don't take it as gospel. The end.